Hi, I'm JB Jones. And I'm Bella Naiman. And we're the co-founders of NYC Jewelry Week. We are excited to welcome you to our sixth year, New York City Jewelry Week 2023. Welcome to our virtual talks program. On our YouTube channel, you'll get to enjoy incredible content that we've put together for you with the theme of iconography, looking at the past, present, and future of jewelry. You can see the full schedule on our website at nycjewelryweek.com, and we invite you to explore all the programs there. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Paola Stroppiana. I'm truly happy to be here today. I'm Giulio from Turin, Italy. I'm art historian and scholar of artist jewelry. And today I have the pleasure of talking about this argument with Eliana Negroni, founder and curator of the Gioielli Infermento project. Actually, Eliana is a chair of ACC Boards, the Italian Association for Contemporary Jewelry. She is the director of the Archivio Negroni, a contemporary craft hub in Milan, originated from her family's heritage jewelry tool making firm and archives. It's a pleasure that I pass on you, Eliana. Hello, hello, Paola. I'm so happy to be connected here with you today. Hello, everyone that is listening to this conversation. And uh, I'm very pleased uh, to be here uh, with you. As you say, that you are an art historian, uh, but you are also a journalist and an independent curator. In recent years, uh, you have dedicated much of your research to contemporary jewelry and artist jewelry in the last century until today. You curated uh, the exhibition Scultura Aurea, Gioielli d'Artista per un nuovo rinascimento, the art jewelry for a new renaissance, at the Galleria Nazionale delle Marche, Palazzo Ducale di Urbino, in 2019. And then also Il Segno e l'Ornamento, i gioielli di Gio Pomodoro, Gio Pomodoro Art Jewelry, at the Museum of Jewelry in Vicenza, Basilica del Palladio, in 2018. And then Gioielli Vertiginosi, Vertigo Jewelry, by Adam Inola e le avanguardie artistiche in Turin, uh, al Museo Civico di Arte Antica, Palazzo Madama, Torino, 2016. So, Paola, <laughs> what else? Today you will talk about uh, artist jewelry and the connection between jewelry and art, and in particular about your recent investigation about Max Ernst jewelry production, which you published in the catalog on the occasion of the last Ernst exhibition at Palazzo Reale in Milan uh, that happened last spring. It's up to you now. Thank you, Eliana, for this great presentation introducing. Yes, this is the reason why I started from these great images of this big fish made in gold by Ernst. And I would like to show you for as the first images this picture taken by the exhibition held in Milan in this spring. And as you know, Max Ernst is the famous uh, painter and uh, sculptor. Uh, he was born in Germany in uh, 1891 and died in 1976. And he was a very eclectic artist. And this is the reason why the uh, two curators, uh, Jürgen Peck and Martina Mazzotta, provided a big section also about the jewelry's production. And they were exhibited uh, some pendants, uh, small silver sculptures, and a series of silver plates. I was invited by the curators to write an essay about this section. Uh, for me, it was a great opportunity to analyze the inspiration sources of the artist and to deepen the amazing connection between these pendants and the Hopi Native American culture. I already noticed uh, this connection in the past, my, measure, my researches had remained unpublished until then. Today, I would like to underline, to point out the importance of the artist's biography. The pendants were made at the end of the 50s in France, but we cannot understand them if we do not study the period when Ernst lived in Sedona, Arizona, 
where he spent a few years with Dorothea Tanning, married in 1946, before returning to France. We must say that even before then, Ernst was passionate about the art of non-European culture. He was a connoisseur and collector of Kachina dolls. And Peggy Guggenheim, he was the first uh, wife uh, before Dorothea, recalled at the time of their marriage that compulsive purchases of Ernst at antique dealers in New York, as well as the André Breton, the theorist and founder of surrealist movement. And we see in the few images we could see it. We see here some images of this pendant. I put together one mask of Hopi culture and one mask made by Ernst. And this is a famous uh, uh, picture taken uh, about André Breton with his collection, wow. his, uh, his studios. An amazing collection. But uh, so I'm very curious and I hope it, also our listeners are curious about Cachina dolls. Uh, which are these uh, kind of uh, uh, objects? Yes, we call dolls, but uh, um, for my studies was very interesting, uh, this guide about uh, the Kachina by Barton Wright. Kachina represents the beliefs, the social structure of moral values of the Hopi Native Americans, and that fascinated and inspired artists for a century. André Breton, as we saw it, began collecting uh, Kachinas in 1927, introduced them to, in Paris to many artists. Uh, as, as actually Max Ernst, Marcel Duchamp, Roberto Matta, who began to collect them. The Opi lived on a group of mesas in northeastern Arizona for ma more than 900 years, uh, surviving battles with their neighbors near Havajo and from 1629 Spanish invaders. The Cachina represents uh, um, both a real object but also supernatural forces animals, insects, plants, clouds, rain, uh, comprises some of approximately 300 casino in the Opi Pantheon, means uh, everything in the nature. Uh, since it's not possible for humans to interact directly with Kachina spirits, Opi men wear Kachina masks and costumes. Uh, once invested with Kachina spirit, they participate in ceremonial dance and that we can observe it by initiatives. It's important to recall that they are not just toys, but they help to teach children their religion and their place in the society. Looking at the styles, their heads, as we saw before, are very large and it's over, everyone is different from another and express a sense of humor, benevolent humor, and they could remind us uh, like uh, big cartoons. And we could see that uh, Ernst uh, completely uh, pick up this uh, kind of uh, uh, sense of uh, uh, with big eyes and with big uh, mouths. Yes, there is like a, 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 a real a parallelism between the masks and the dolls, or maybe it's like a dictionary of all uh, the human values. Uh, it's really uh, amazing. And I think uh, uh, this is very interesting. How, how her does uh, transfer Kachina dolls uh, into his heart? Yes, this is, is quite interesting because when I said before, he came back uh, uh, at the end of the 40s, at the beginning of the 50s in France. And uh, between the 1958 and 1959, Ernst, in collaboration with the goldsmith uh, François Hugo, modeled a series of plasticine masks to make them melt in gold. The model served as prototype also for the bronze molds at the first series of brooches and pendants, most of all pendants, on medium and large format until 30 centimeters the diameter. Very and um, this is a very, very big pendant. And uh, for this realization, Hugo, who managed the laboratory in Aix-en-Provence, used a 22 and 23 carat gold foils uh, because it was easier for him to work on it, working them embossed and chiseled. Some of these first specimens uh, to which the artists assigned collective names uh, like head or masks 
uh, will be exhibited for the first time at the Musée National d'Art Moderne in Paris on the occasion of the Greek retrospective dedicated to Ernst already in November 59, so at the end of the same year. And even her head was chosen as the cover of the exhibition catalog. This is for me is quite interesting and strange. This means that Ernst considers uh, this mask as the sculpture, at the same level of the sculpture. And uh, at the beginning of the 70s, uh, the total of this model, and most of them was an addition of eight copies per subject, exceeded 30 exemplars. But uh, this is interesting that uh, as uh, uh, the decorative arts at the end of the 40s and the 50s, uh, the jewelry and the ceramics uh, add the same level culture of the other kind of of arts like painting and sculpture. And so this is the, the proof because we have on the cover of the one important catalog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we could see other images. Oh, this is really nice that uh, that is Max Ernst on the wall with, 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 the, uh, with the same faces of the Cacina dolls decorating. Yes, these part are the, his, the proofs. Part of his home, it's part of yes, house. yes, this is uh, his house. These are the proof of his interest in uh, Kachina. And uh, when um, uh, Peggy recalled that uh, he bought many Kachina in uh, New York, this in fact was taken in uh, New York uh, Peggy Guggenheim apartments uh, on the right side. Yeah, and on a your big left, collection. <laughs> big, big collection. And on the left, you could see the, the picture that was taken in Sedona and show us Ernst and the construction and decoration of his house where to live with Dorothea Tanning. Uh, we could see some mask applied on the wall as an ornament and uh, in concrete. Now they are lost for the most part. Some of them are modeled in concrete, uh, as I said, are strongly inspired by Opie mask and will we chosen in the mid 60s by Ernst as models for some bronze sculptures too. It should be noted that Ernst on the typological level chose the pandas as the only type of jewelry, avoiding any other ornamental such as earrings, bracelets or rings. Uh, probably this is the reason is that uh, in uh, adhering the surrealist vision of the duplication, duplication of the face, uh, this probably are more, we think about uh, the pectoral, uh, not just uh, pendants or, or necklace, but there are some surrealist uh, pieces. Uh, I think also genderless because it's okay for women and for men. And uh, they are suggesting us another kind of vision uh, a duplicated, <laughs> a vision duplicated. So this is the reason why he did it so big pieces. Yes, yes, I, I think so. Is the, the reason why also to reproduce some mask, some um, expression, a very uh, impressive ones. So like, like they have ritual, to be big. Kind of, like a kind yeah. of ritual uh, yes. object. Yes, the dimension in this case is important. Uh, things to, to put in these pieces. And it, uh, it's, it's interesting also to remind that also Dorothea Tanning, uh, her wife, was involved in this kind of research. Uh, she did, uh, with, with Francois Hugo too, some jewels, not so much, M6 or 8 jewels, no more than this. And uh, there are some references to her life, uh, to the experience in Sedona. And uh, the, in fact, uh, she gave uh, the name of uh, this jewels, the name of their dog. Uh, Kachina was the name of the dog. So we could understand that Kachina was important for both of them. And also in other little pendant by Dorothea Tanning, we could recognize um, a totem sculpture and uh, we could recognize uh, again the OP culture uh, that was uh, important for them. And uh, we have an, another interesting that, image. That was, uh, yes, the, simi, uh, simi, uh, uh, the, the mind goes that with this dimension, 
other objects can be made like mask and um, so mask and silver plates or dishes or some objects for uh, uh, not only for the body yes these are uh, rarely exposed they were exposed in the exhibition in milan and uh, these plates are another kind of stories because they were not made with francois hugo but uh, they were made in collaboration with a company in Milan. I was uh, made the research Italian company, mm -hmm. a, a Italian company, the Cosca, a Cosca uh, company that uh, doesn't exist anymore. But it's uh, quite interesting because it was specialized in gold and silver pens, uh, and uh, the production was extended other to other house objects. And the dishes uh, with name like Passionata, Messalina, but we could see also Cacina, the, the yes. name of, uh, on the right side. Now we know how, what is. What is it? Now we could recognize a Cacina. Uh, were exhibited for the first time in Rome between January and February 1972. I think that uh, was one of the last production of uh, Max Sers. And uh, it uh, was uh, normal to me to, uh, to think about yes, this place. To the place of Picasso. So is it possible that Ernst uh, knows about the dishes or see uh, the, the dishes? Uh, they saw the, the, the dishes of uh, Picasso. Yes, this is uh, quite sure because uh, um, Max Ernst was a great friend uh, of Francois Hugo even before to come back to France uh, uh, from Sedona. And uh, we could think that uh, imagine that at the end of the 50s, uh, he uh, was in the south of France. He went to visit his uh, friend. And in this very moment, there was a, a great, great artist who was attended to jewelry production, and it was Pablo Picasso. And uh, we must uh, uh, recall that uh, Picasso uh, was a, the, the most eclectic artist and they want to uh, try every kind of material. And uh, the collaboration without, between Picasso and Hugo, because uh, again, Francois Hugo is uh, one of the protagonists of our story. Um, the, this collaboration uh, began from this kind of uh, uh, silver plates that Picasso wanted for his private use but also for little sculptures and medallion. And uh, this production should be read in Picasso biography. Uh, as I say, there's a strong desire to experiment with materials, uh, starting from the ceramics uh, with which he created his first place, his first ornaments in Valauri in the south of France. Mm -hmm. uh, we will also um, remind that uh, the first experiment in jewelry by Picasso uh, was made with the help of the dentist of Valori because he asked for help uh, with gold and at the time it was easy to, to ask to the dentist. But uh, <laughs> after that, Picasso said in a letter that uh, it was not uh, the, the situation to ask again to this the dentist because he has a much so, so some kind of work to do and there was not so the opportunity to uh, disturb again him. <laughs> and so it's very funny. And uh, this is uh, Picasso in Valauri, which is the first wow. experiment in uh, gold, in clay. And uh, this is the great oh, picture. With Francois Hugo. Hugo. At the end, we could see Picasso and Francois Hugo and uh, another place for the fruits, a compotier, and some medallions taken from the compotier models. And, uh, and, uh, the, and then the concerning... Queen, <laughs> the queen of uh, the collectors. Yes, concerning uh, Max Ers, we could not uh, uh, forget about uh, Peggy Guggenheim, that it was uh, the first, one of the first to uh, understand the importance of uh, wearing uh, jewels, is jewelry as art. And this is the famous, this is not, we have not a picture of the um, vernissage of our hair gallery in New York, but uh, these two um, pictures remind us uh, 
that uh, great, uh, fabulous night when uh, she wore an uh, earring by Calder and an earring by uh, Yves Tanguy. And uh, in, his mem- in her memories, uh, she reminds that uh, he chose uh, these uh, two, two, two wear two kind different earrings uh, to underline uh, the importance for her of surrealism and, and of abstractism at the same level. So uh, this was a great uh, uh, thing to remind us. Uh, she said, I wore an earring by Tanguy and wine by Calder to declare my impartiality between surrealism <laughs> and abstractions. This is a, a funny. He is really the first witness of wearing a uh, jewelry in a. Yes, in a like a performance. Such an involvement. It's kind of performance, too. Yeah, yes. So yes. We, we, we spoke about Ernst, about Picasso, and you cited the other, uh, these, these other Calder uh, and Tanguy. Uh, so many artists. Uh, had to deal with jewelry in uh, in the in the 20th century. Yes, uh, um, we could say that probably we could uh, imagine the starting of the jewelry by art is uh, as a kind of art uh, at the around the 30s. Uh, mm-hmm. The revolutionary idea of the uh, this the last century is that the original design idea of the artist is an, a great value of the jewels, equal, if not superior, uh, to that of material. And in France, between the 30s and the 40s, is the fashion that give us uh, an impetus to the avant-garde rethinking of uh, ornament. Uh, maybe the first uh, to, to this uh, was Elsa Schiaparelli, the great designer, uh, she starts from uh, accessories and buttons. It was the true uh, stylistic code of the Maison. And she collaborated with artists uh, such as uh, Meret Oppenheim, Alberto Giacometti, Cocteau, Dali, Leonor Fini. Uh, also in this case, uh, we must say that uh, André Breton, uh, surrealist uh, theory, uh, a poetic was so important uh, it, now it's important to understand the many choices of that period we could see here the very famous cuff by Meret Oppenheim and for the full bracelet and was uh, immediately bought by the director uh, um, bar uh, of the MoMA in New York so now it's in the permanent collection of uh, MoMA and uh, it's interesting also to underline that uh, it was recognized at the time the importance uh, of these uh, pieces as piece of art. This is the, from uh, 1936, so it's uh, quite it, early. It was a, uh, a kind piece. of revolution. It's a completely, complete of, revolution. Of, uh, how wearing an ornament, how wearing really a, a piece of art, not. It was not for all, it was not for all women, but it's a great idea to start with something really new. And we could see another uh, great collaboration between Elsa and Jean Cocteau, and this is a ceramic button, and this was a famous even in coat that now is a Philadelphia Museum of Art. And these are a very, very important <laughs> piece. I know you <laughs> like <favorite>. it. <laughs> I know you like it very well. Well, I and, like it because I think that it's something without time. It's something that you can wear. Uh, nowadays? <laughs> Today yes, I could yes, wear it today, immediately. And, and in the 30s, and well, it was for a, for a star, for a very elegant woman, dedicated to a very elegant woman. In this piece, uh, there is all, because this is a tailleur made by Elsa Schiaparelli and uh, the button were made by François Hugo on design by Alberto Giacometti. And uh, <laughs> this, piece, <laughs> this piece was in the permanent collection of Marlene Dietrich, so we could say that uh, there are all the arts in this piece. Now it's a, mm-hmm. uh, it's a permanent collection and a cinematic uh, museum in Berlin. And uh, this is a compendium of all uh, 
we are saying now that the jewelry is, is a piece of art and piece and it's so important for the fashion too and, and uh, it, is, it remains a point of reference uh, during the time you know it's something i i i should say uh, it, it is still contemporary uh, in some way Yes, it's, it's a model. My humble opinion. <laughs> yes, for sure, it's, it's a great model. And uh, these are another fundamental uh, person wow. meeting artists for Elsa. They are great friendship too. Um, Dali, uh, Salvador Dali shared with uh, Elsa the same need to break up uh, with conventions and uh, with the past. Uh, we could see in the famous ring uh, passionate woman and uh, uh, this brooch, the eye of the time. Um, Salvador Dali introduced the novelty of the artist jewelry on the international scene, and in particular also in Italy, because in 1954, uh, representing Spain, uh, he presented the 10th yeah. edition of Milano Triennale, uh, 21 jewels. Uh, uh, in, from uh, that he made in the United States with uh, in collaboration with Argentine goldsmith Carlos Alemani. So it was a, a revolutionary also for for Italy. It was the first time that Italy saw these uh, um, great uh, uh, pieces of jewelry made by artists. So just after the war, we we may say. Right. Yes, it is a, also um, a kind of renovation after the, right. the, the, the war, the war period. The uh, in in fact, uh, uh, Carlos, he, he met uh, Carlos Alemani during the war. It was the refugees, uh, both of them in, uh, in New York, and they met in San Reg Regent's uh, Hotel and they made these pieces together. So it was the beginning of a great uh, collaboration. And uh, so it was a model also for our country. Yeah. And, and so we can speak about Italy too, yes. in, in these uh, context of jewelry and art. How is Italy, uh, was the beginning? How was the beginning? Yes, in Italy we are a great uh, examples of uh, uh, not only artist uh, jewelry, but also editor and uh, the person who think about it. And uh, concerning the Italian situation, we must talk about Mario Mazenza. Uh, we could see in this uh, picture the shop in Via del Corso in Rome that doesn't exist anymore today. And uh, Mario Mazenza is uh, like a leader of the renewal of Italy goldsmith production, the second post-war period. Uh, until then, the jury that looked at the, the Viennese and French production, uh, adopting their kind of uh, uh, stylistic futures. But we also say that uh, um, the jewelry was the last problem <laughs> that Italy could have in that period. So Mario Mazenza, uh, must uh, you think that must invented something new also for uh, for the economics because uh, it was not uh, the first thing uh, to think about uh, in a period so poor period mm -hmm. for for Italy and uh, Mario was a descendant of a very important families of jewelry and uh, inherited the father jewelry store based in uh, in Rome uh, he was also an art collector and uh, he had um, a strange, a great idea to ask to the artist, uh, as painter, a sculptor, he, he knew very well, some drawings uh, um, in order to realize uh, some unique pieces. Uh, this is uh, quite important, it was just unique pieces. Uh, and uh, in 1949, he organized a great exhibition with some important artists uh, of this period, uh, such as Afro, Franco Canilla, Lorenzo Guerrini, Gottuso, Mirko Basalbe Basaldella. In the following years, uh, Mazenza uh, was joined uh, by the other artists uh, that were interested in this kind of a new adventure, like uh, Giuseppe Capogrossi, uh, also Nino Franchina, Gino Severini, uh, Pietro Consagra. And, and in uh, that period, they were all, uh, I mean, quite young artists. They were 
uh, that were very enthusiastic also. I mean, I, I, uh, I can imagine uh, yes, in, in relation true. with uh, this new means, this new me medium of uh, expression. Yes, probably they um, immediately understood uh, uh, this challenge to um, try to uh, translate uh, their art uh, in jewelry. It was a completely new, but as I said before, the um, applied arts uh, in this period were uh, highly considered uh, and uh, at the same level of the other arts, at the same level of drawings or paintings or sculpture. And um, this is the reason why uh, it was a, a very successful uh, idea. Uh, he made uh, so a great, uh, um, great exhibitions in Italy in three, uh, not in the shop, but in a gallery. So uh, it's another uh, great idea to develop this idea, not uh, uh, through a shop, but through an art gallery. Al Milione in Milan, alla Bussola. Yes. Into a different, a different reputation to, to, to yes, also to of. give another kind of idea of the jewelry as a, a art to wear, and, uh, and it's quite interesting to find uh, this uh, uh, success on the newspaper of the time. This is a uh, epoch of Epoca. the 1950, and um, as you said before. Uh, this is strange because Epoca is, is not a fashion magazine. Yes, it, it was, was a magazine it. about any, everything. It's Art for men, uh, for everyone. Mm -hmm. To but, uh, investigate uh, the social uh, uh, the environment. No, I, I remember we, we were, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, I, I remember some, well, not in 1950, but uh, also in the 70s, Epoca was a very... Uh, re uh, high reputation uh, uh, magazine about society, about politics, mm -hmm. uh, not about fashion. But uh, here is uh, funny because uh, uh, they said that uh, uh, these uh, new jewels are for the updated and modern uh, uh, women. So they suggest that you want to be uh, updating. Uh, you have to to think about uh, this new revolution, and this uh, is quite uh, funny. And we could see also some pieces from Afro, uh, from Canilla. Uh, yes, not the only Mazenza, but also yes, other. Yes, uh, there was also uh, Mazenza, uh, a violet of collaboration of Danilo and Massimo Fumanti brothers. Uh, and uh, the, these brothers were uh, specialized in gems. And in addition to the artists uh, who already worked with, um, for Mazenza, the Fumanti brothers proposed uh, new names uh, and uh, set up new exhibition over the years uh, and were very appreciated uh, by art lovers, but uh, also by actresses and societies. And they, this is a very famous, this is a fashion magazine. Fashion magazine yeah. And uh, this is a cover of Annabella in 1971 and uh, with Elizabeth Taylor uh, wearing a jewel in the, by Gio, um, Giuseppe Capogrossi. And this is a very quite interesting necklace because this was made especially for her by the artist Mario Ceroli uh, with the, the profile of her and, uh, on the side and of Richard Barton on the other side uh, looking at each other. <laughs> And uh, it was made by Massimo Fumanti. And uh, we must say that it was not appreciated um, just by the actress or some socialite, very important persons, but also by the critics. Oh. This is a... Today you, you, you are <laughs> expressing all my icons of elegance, of really another great woman. Yes, for, for Italy, for Italian uh, uh, people, it's uh, a very important person, Palma Bucarelli, because it was the she first... She saved uh, our art. <laughs> she saved our art. She, she proposed new artists also from USA. 
and uh, she was the first uh, woman director uh, in Rome uh, for uh, Galleria Nazionale d'Arte Moderna, and she was the first woman to propose uh, the, the musealization of uh, the jewels, and uh, this is the one of the uh, very maybe there are just one or two uh, pictures of this uh, um, box okay. this uh, showcase uh, uh, pilot showcase uh, with some jewels by artists and she proposed to put it in the permanent collection path but uh, unfortunately there was just uh, uh, during uh, her uh, her direction, but now it doesn't exist anymore. But it was uh, the very first uh, um, moment that we have uh, the jewelry, the contemporary jewelry in a museum. So uh, she was a revolutionary uh, woman, not only for that, but we must uh, say thanks to uh, sense of style, sense of art uh, uh, in this picture. Is very little. A lot. <laughs> it's very little, but uh, she is wearing a ring by Umberto Mastroianni in this uh, in this picture, and uh, we could. Uh, and then we have <laughs> others uh, in Italy yes. that had a, a, a great role. In Do you remember and, uh, Salvador Dali? Salvador uh, Dali presentation in 1954, uh, as I said before. And um, Arnaldo Giopomodoro, the two famous sculptors and artists, uh, saw this uh, Triennale edition. And uh, in the edition of 1957, they were chosen as curator, as it was strange because they were chosen as a curator of a metal section. And uh, they proposed as uh, some artists uh, too. Uh, but the it was a, another kind of revolutionary, but the very big revolutionary in Milan uh, was uh, this uh, gem uh, uh, production with Giancarlo Montebello. And we must spend some words about it. Uh, Giancarlo Montebello uh, with his wife, uh, Teresa Pomodoro, was the sister of uh, Pomodoro Brothers, conceived a new way to approach artist jewelry editing limited edition multiply in collaboration with the greatest artists of the time, creating work of great modernity with the acronym GEM. Between 1967 and 1978, in parallel with the exclusivity of the unique piece by Mazenza and Fumanti in Rome, he collaborated with over 50 artists editing about uh, 200 jewels in limited edition multiplies. The idea was to create uh, jewelry by artists at an affordable price, reaching a general public in a democratic culture vision of the 70s, and making use of the laboratory with goldsmith uh, animals, and at the same time, uh, also same industrial processes. Many national and international names, starting from Arnaldo and Joe, Cesar, Sonia Delaunay, Piero Dorazio, Lucio Fontana, Joe Tilson, also some uh, um, USA artists, Lowell Nesbitt, Nikki de Sanfal, Alex Katz, uh, Man Ray. Uh, many artists have taken to the limit of concept of the ornament as symbolic object. Um, the, this ornament uh, we could see here wearing by Benedetta Barzini and made by Consagra, suggests the ironic ferocity of the famous submission and was an argument of that time. And um, this and the middle, we could see uh, the famous uh, catalog with the great images by, by Hugo Mulas and the big calf by Lucio Fontana. And uh, Eliana, did you meet uh, Giancarlo? You have great memories about yes, it. It is one of my most important memories uh, connected to uh, contemporary jewelry, to art jewelry. Uh, I met uh, Giancarlo Montebello in his studio uh, some years ago, and because he, he was so available, so 
uh, respectful of the activity of the association of IGT. And so he spent a lot of time uh, with us uh, uh, participating to conferences, uh, to meetings, uh, and also for some interviews. We invited him uh, for uh, some jury, uh, in the jury of some projects like Teriali Fermento. And this was a great occasion to share um, his knowledge about this period, even if he was so uh, connected with the present. So, well, when uh, he was asked uh, about this period, of course, he said, uh, well, in Paris, uh, we, uh, you had to go to Paris, you had to, to, to be in Paris to meet all these people, all these artists, and with them uh, have a very enthusiastic uh, uh, relationship to develop uh, this uh, edition, as you explained. Uh, but Giancarlo was uh, a man of the present. So when he shifted to uh, uh, full time to design his own jewelry, was uh, with the same uh, um, energy and with the same attention to all that was uh, uh, around him. And so even if it was an established uh, designer, he was not afraid to uh, have this empathy with uh, all the members of, of the association, uh, with, with people that just wanted to, um, uh, to have a confrontation. And of course, uh, when he told me, yes, you have to say, be, uh, we are in, in, with a friend, in friendful um, relation, because you are my colleague, I said, I am not your, <laughs> I, it was something really, um, I was so uh, proud, but also um, so pleased of his uh, very warm uh, yes. of relation. And I think that also um, the, this uh, kind of, uh, of character, comes out, and you for sure you uh, notice it, uh, and you have the opportunity, the chance to create a nice um, uh, exhibition few uh, few weeks ago, few, uh, and this was what was out of his, his collections. Uh, I mean, this is my yes. direct... Uh, Thank you that uh, you remind me that uh, I must say that I curated this year at the Babsar Gallery in Milan uh, two exhibitions about uh, to, to remind uh, Giancarlo. So the first uh, uh, little moment to remind uh, uh, her production, his production because uh, uh, there are two big moments in the life of Giancarlo. This was this um, multiply adventure with the great, uh, the greatest artist uh, in the world at the moment. It was, but it was just a ten years uh, adventure because we must uh, recall that in 1978 uh, there was a big robbery of all of his uh, things and of all jewels, and there was a. a very difficult moment for him and he decided to change completely his life and start with his art his jewel and uh, i think it was a great uh, uh, example also of or resistance of uh, uh, human being uh, this is the reason why every person who have the chance to meet him to meet him uh, it uh, reminds him as a great human being and a human a master a kind person very and sensible, uh, very sensible, very sensible. so we have the moment of uh, gem and the moment of body ornaments but uh, in uh, in both of these uh, moments uh, uh, montebello uh, is was a, a great master also of life uh, we we will say that but uh, we have also some other i have the occasion of uh, of interview him and uh, we i would like to recall that uh, that images uh, uh, taken by hugo mulas of his jewels uh, 
uh, were taken immediately in all fashion magazines around the world until today on Vogue and uh, very, very famous pieces like uh, this uh, mask by Man Ray or Niki de Sanfal enamel necklace uh, are very popular and they're very popular also in auction today. Uh, the collectors are looking for these pieces. So uh, they are so contemporary pieces. This is a, the, the reason why I think for this, this success. This uh, also to remind the same period that we have uh, uh, other pieces that are uh, timeless, like this Giorgio Facchini piece that I put here, just to remind that the fashion asked again to the artist, the pieces. This was in the same period he produced for uh, Pierre Cardin exhibition for the fashion again. So um, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And also in Italy, there was another maverick person, Escleto Munari, that I was lucky enough to interview him. And uh, he proposed another uh, adventure to ask him to the architects, the, the very famous architect at the time uh, to realize jewelry. And uh, this was ex ex exhibited uh, in USA too. And there was a very famous uh -huh. exhibition uh, with Ettore Sozzas, Mario Bellini, uh, Michele De Lucchi, and uh, very strange pieces that uh, um, remind us that uh, the creativity could uh, uh, go everywhere. And, uh, but we need uh, an editor, we need a master, we need someone that uh, could think it about it. So Cleto as uh, uh, Giancarlo, as Mario and Mazenza now. had and the, now. the now. idea. And now, and now the things are going on, fortunately uh, for us. And uh, there are many pieces, also very important artists like Ai Weiwei, uh, dedicate uh, some uh, research to, to jewels and uh, this maybe is a there is, sorry if, if I can say maybe there is mo a more direct in, in the recent uh, years the single artists are more powerful so the figure of the editor is, has a difficulty in, in, uh, in uh, leading this process it's more something that uh, if I uh, I if I see I away and now you, you are explaining why, but it's something that starts from the powerful reputation of uh, of the artist. Yes, there are so some galleries that I've been thinking about. There are very f a few number of galleries that uh, uh, continuing the, the, the this tradition of uh, editors. And, uh, for example, Elisabetta Cipriani in London is uh, one of them. And uh, this is, was in collaboration uh, with her. This is the Rebar in gold. And um, this is a very touching object because you could see just uh, a calf, uh, a bracelet, but uh, it uh, reference to 208 uh, Wenchuan earthquake in Sichuan uh, province in China. And which killed about uh, 70,000 people. Um, I, I, I was uh, focused on the, this worrying number of children who have died because the poor construction uh, technique used to build uh, the schools. Uh, after uh, Wen Chuan uh, earthquake uh, found, uh, I Wei found a mass of twisted uh, steel armor like this. And uh, this inspired uh, these jewels that is in gold to um, point out the importance of the lives. So the gold is a reference to the lives, but this piece is a, the reference to a poor piece that could be stronger, that could save many lives more. So it's interesting that, uh, again, also uh, an artist like Ai Weiwei could uh, transfer to translate his art uh, in jewels. Uh, and um, another example is uh, Anish Kapoor that uh, uh, was more famous uh, and approached the jewel too and transferred independence, the idea of depth uh, and distorted optical perception 
as in the water series. And uh, in, the, in Italy, um, there is um, another great example to me is Giorgio Vigna because uh, he's uh, an artist. Uh, the, in this uh, picture, you could see that his work uh, is in a museum too. And this uh, is glass covered by copper. So, so it's quite interesting that uh, uh, they try uh, to, to make some new challenge with the materials. Uh, it's very important that the uh, work like that enters also in the museum again, because uh, they have, uh, again, as you say, the reputation of work uh, of art. Uh, now I want also to uh, remember a person very close to me, a very famous artist, uh, here in Italy, uh, the master of uh, arte povera, Piero Gilardi. Piero Gilardi he was, um, is a great uh, philosopher uh, about uh, uh, the, the importance of nature that is a so important theme uh, nowadays, sad matter. And uh, he made a piece like that also in the 60s. So he think about the importance of nature uh, many years well, ago, before. <laughs> before now, and uh, these are uh, his last uh, drawings uh, before he passed away. Uh, so I can just read the, these, the, this transformation that in, in uh, toward uh, the recent years, uh, uh, artists are more conceptual, not only in their uh, big uh, works, but also it, with the means of expression of the jewelry, the concept is more and more important. Even yes. it, it, it is not just uh, the, the, the concept of the ornament, but uh, the message that you can translate, that you can transfer uh, to an observer. Uh, you are, the, the body is just like a, uh, a vehicle of, of a concept. But as you say, the, like in the case of Ai Weiwei or Piero Gilardi, you, we could see that there are also politics arguments to, to communicate. So when you were this kind of piece, it's just not art, it's a message. It's a statement. Given, it's a a statement. statement. So uh, it's a transformation that, that uh, when you choose a piece like that, uh, you give a message. So uh, and, and this is, and what is, in, is important to have these pieces to show these pieces also in museums where yes. people is more uh, attentive also uh, in in the communication of these values. So yes, you are doing a, a, a great uh, activity, uh, transferring and um, showing and uh, organize and uh, curating. Uh, some great events uh, in a museum. So, so bringing jewelry in Italian museums. Yes. Like, uh, this is a, a, another a really uh, amazing hall in the museum of uh, Palazzo Madama in Torino. Yes, as you Fantastica. said before, we have in Palma Bucarelli our model, uh, our <laughs> icon and uh, it is the importance of musealization of the jewels uh, is, uh, for me is, uh, uh, is uh, the most important things to work about. And uh, I would like to recall my, my very first uh, big exhibition in, in a museum, uh, the Gioielli Vertiginosi, the Vertigo Jewels uh, at the Museo Civico d'Arte Antica in Torino in uh, 2016. It was about the jewels by Ada Minola and uh, I think it's very important to propose a, a project about jewelry master to the museum, also in order to give to the jury the right uh, role of work of art and to give back, as in this occasion, uh, the notoriety to little known artists, the famous artists as, uh, such as Amin, Ada Minola. Ada was a sculptor, was a gallerist, was a muse of artists, and uh, she was making you know, many artists, uh, such as Gutai in Italy in 1950. So this, this strange uh, person, this, uh, another kind of eclectic. eclectic woman to, to recall. 
and uh, I do hope uh, in the, the future there will more more opportunities uh, to organize a vision oh, uh, with artist jewelry. Any image of uh, the rings? Uh, the, yes, we have uh, these uh, wow. the incredible wow. pieces uh, yeah. made uh, by hand by her, and uh, was very great oh, pieces. Yeah. The last yeah. one you could see is a ring uh, of 10 centimeters. Uh, it's a big, very, very big one. And um, I think that uh, um, I, I will work on uh, put this kind of pieces in the permanent collection uh, of the museum. To me, it's the, my uh, objective of my studies and my research. And I'm very happy, as in the case of Max Ernst, uh, the jewelry as a, a section of the, in the production. And uh, in this case, I have this great opportunity also in my city to uh, present uh, the research of, uh, of this quality, of this uh, kind of very important art to, to show to the people uh, that so there side are... Side by side, right? not yes. only the jewelry, but yes. also all the production. All the production all together. So you can read uh, the evolution yes. and... Uh, the same creativity, very, the same creativity very. at the same level. Wow, so, what, what a there are many, many things to say <laughs> more. What a, what a flight in this, uh, in this perfect field that we love so much. And well, I think that an hour has <laughs> go away, gone away. And let's hope <laughs> also for all the people who listen to us. And I give I'm me the, the opportunity to thank you again, to thank you again to be with me. And I would like to thank to all uh, the people who are listening to, to us. And, and this uh, fantastic uh, opportunity, opportunity with the New York Jewelry Week to have, uh, even if we are not in New York now, and I'm very, <laughs> I'm very sad for this. We do but... hope to go then. <laughs> Yes. Soon, next very year. soon, next, next year. year. We will, we will be I back. would like to thank again all the team of New York City Jewelry Week for this great occasion to talk about jewels and art. And so thank you to you and thank you to thank all. Thank you, Paola. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. See you soon. Bye.